Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. You've been hearing his name all weekend, all week long. All week long. <laughs> we have Jason Lee here. Jason Lee, good morning. Man, I'm happy to be back. Now, you know him from Hollywood Unlocked and a host of others, but we've been hearing your name all week long. Yep. So let's get right into it. So uh, I think we heard, we pretty much heard the story about Karen Civil and, and everything that uh, was said about her from Hollywood Unlocked. So break down... What happened? What was the story? First of all, how are you, Jason? <laughs> how are you today, sir? I'm Jesus good. Christ! <laughs> I'm good. You know, the last couple of days I've been streaming live, right? Last couple of days, I ain't gonna lie, my energy's been kind of low. Um, it has been a low vibration because the old Jason, when this is happening, feeling some level of vindication would just be burning the internet up. Mm -hmm. But I really am trying to evolve as a person. Like, I've mastered the tea thing. Like, the tea is cool. I now want to get into the cappuccino. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to evolve. <laughs> <laughs> I want to evolve as a brand, and so uh, I've been really restraining myself from responding. Mm -hmm. The only place I wanted to come and talk to you about was here because I really feel like everybody in the culture pays attention to y'all. Mm -hmm. And so going to my Instagram, going on a rant, going on a tangent, it wouldn't do anything but take me back to where I'm trying to get away from. So do you, uh, you think I'm you been, get into a place of healing within yourself? Well, you know, the, a couple of last times I've seen you, you said I always have a scowl on my face. Yes, I'm like Jason. Um, so I started the therapy process. Great. Uh, I started the weight loss process. Mm -hmm. I started working on myself. I started paying more attention to how I react to situations because I think oftentimes what I want to say gets lost in the delivery. What I say gets lost in, you know, the reputation I built around spilling the tea and all of that. So I'm trying to evolve out of that. Mm -hmm. This weekend, I think, was, for many reasons, a test. It was like, okay, here, here's a big one. What you going to do with that? Because... If you remember when I came on your show before, I talked about uh, a situation where I was somewhere and saw somebody I didn't like with somebody I was close to, and it made me just break down in tears to where I really was, really wanted to do some crazy wild shit. That was seeing Karen Civil in Floyd Mayweather's box at the um, at the Super Bowl mm. because me and Floyd are close. We're you know really close friends and you know work together, whatever. And uh, I pride myself on trying to protect the people I'm close to around being uh, being around people who are not good people. And she was one of them. And I wanted to say it when I was here, but you know, I didn't know Angela's relationship with her. I know she's up here. She's cool with a lot of people, mm -hmm. and she's um, you know she's finessed her way into having this um, this uh, public image of being uh, all pro black things and everything, whatever. That's a good topic, by the way. That's a great topic we talk about. Whoa. Just imagine, like you you with somebody that you don't like. And well, you 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 in a place you see somebody that you fuck with, but they with somebody that you don't like. Mm. Do you tell them why you don't like them to make sure that they don't have the same situation, or do you just mind your business because you don't know what their relationship is? Mm. That's a good topic. We'll talk about the, that later. Here's the deal. Mm. See, I call Floyd. Well, first of all, I call Floyd's people and Floyd immediately because when my page had come down, when Hollywood unlocked it come down, I want people to understand. This is bigger than it is. There's a lot of people that don't know what we're talking about, so you got to fill okay, them in the okay, whole story. Okay, So I started Hollywood Unlocked in 2015. I had always had the idea that I wanted to be in the industry and didn't know where because I don't rap and sing. I don't have talent like that. You know, I don't act. But I knew I can talk my shit. I know that I'm an honest person with integrity. I knew I had relationships. I had been around Latifah since I was 15, so I kind of seen it all and wanted to be in it, but I didn't know where, where my talent lied. And then you see people like the Charlemagnes and the Breakfast Clubs and the Wendy Williams, and you're like, damn, like... They're talking their shit. They're saying their opinion. They're they're on for just being themselves. I want to figure that out. Then I saw the boom of social media and blogging. So I started, you know, building all these relationships in the space. And I thought, well, you know, you got the media takeouts that write whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Why don't we create something called Hollywood Unlocked where we lift the veil on Hollywood and show people what's really happening? Not not the tea and all of that. That was never the intent. It was how do I build a trusted platform people want to come to? Mm -hmm. It, but then when I launched Hollywood Unlocked, nobody gravitated towards that. Everybody was afraid of it because the bossups of the world and the media takeouts, they felt they put me all in that bucket. And I was immediately marginalized, even with the relationships I had. It was like, nah, he going to be messy. He gonna... So after trying to get people to support me and not getting it, I said, you know what? I'm just going to become a critic as a fan. I'm just going to say this is what I like or don't like. But then I started getting really... Um, you know, into it and seeing the negative side of it. And I saw on social media, this is what the people wanted to react to. Mm. So I started giving them more of what they wanted. And then ultimately I ended up in this, you know, loving hip hop world and all that. So uh, when I launched Hollywood Unlocked, I started out with no money. No, I started from an Instagram page. I found young um, black women and black men who wanted to learn blogging, saw me on loving hip hop, believed in me and believed that I was going to figure it out. So they started interning. 
-hmm. Started having them work, and then we started getting money. Then, then I started paying people. Then I started having. Uh, I then I had a legitimate business. And right when we were, I feel like on our way there, we had got to 1.2 million followers on Instagram. We did the uh, Love and Hip Hop thing. I launched the podcast, Hollywood on Locked Uncensored. Uh, my Instagram goes down. And for anybody that doesn't understand, it wasn't just an Instagram page. That's what I think people are missing. A lot of people are on my side with this, but they're missing. This is a platform that was posting news about uh, uh, black bodies being killed by white police officers. It was posting young gay kids who were being uh, harassed and killing themselves because they were gay. Mm -hmm. This was a platform talking about the disparity of our culture and our community. It was also a balance, in my opinion, of talking about what was real and wasn't what wasn't real because a lot of people trying to get in the game weren't aware. And when I first came out the game, I had Bossip trying to discredit me, saying, "Oh, we never had a Jason Lee work for Hollywood for a Bossip who was gay. We got a Jason Lee, but he ain't gay." My man, Ja Ja, ja Jasmine Brand <laughs> went and did an interview with Hazel E and outed the celebrity I was having a, a private relationship with who wasn't gay. <gasps> This is how all the bloggers worked against me. I when missed I first that started. one. Oh, yeah, I didn't hear that one either. This is how all the bloggers that were working against me tried to discredit me when I first started. And so I said, well, you know, fuck it. I'm going to just keep going. I'm going to just get on the next. So I kept going, kept going, kept going. And then all of a sudden, the Instagram page came down. So it really cut off one main source of revenue that I was paying my employees as mm -hmm. a black employer. Two... It, it it was an attempt to stifle me because they knew my ambition was crazy and I was growing really fast and I was out here. And I was one of the few faces of the platforms out here because a lot of them, you don't know who they are. You know who Jazz and know who I am, but you don't know these other people. Facts, right? I don't hide behind <clears throat> my page. I don't hide behind my brand. I'm out here, out here. So when it came down, I was immediately distraught. And for a really quick second, I go, damn, this is, this is it. Because I put a lot of money, a lot of sweat, equity, a lot of a lot of energy into it. Now I had to go have conversations with my staff. We had a whole Zoom call. People thought was, they were going to lose their jobs. I had to explain to them that not only was I going to figure out a hustle, I was going to figure this shit out. I went and hustled three times as hard as I had ever done for Hollywood Unlocked, side hustling, making deals, doing this, taking money from shit that I could have poured into buying houses or property and flipping it for me, but now having to make sure none of my staff lost mm -hmm. their job, and none of them did. Didn't so, Floyd help too? Floyd was behind the podcast. So oh, gotcha, when Floyd gotcha. was So when Floyd got behind the podcast, I'm going to make I'm gonna come back to that. Floyd was very much into the podcast because he felt like, damn, like, you got talent. Like, you're going to figure this shit out. So when the page came down, you know, of course I called Floyd like, yo, we're going to keep the podcast going, but now we don't have Instagram to promote it. I'm going to figure out. So Angie from the Shea Room, Robin at Ball Alert, shout out to them. They would keep sharing my content to keep the brand alive publicly mm -hmm. as friends and as um, people who supported me. So I didn't know where, where it came down. I was looking through my text message yesterday. One of the first people I text was Karen Civil. Mm. Hey, the Hollywood Unlocked Instagram page came down. I know you got relationships to Instagram, Facebook. Can you help me? Yeah, let me connect you with so-and-so and so-and-so and so. He's trying to help me. So I said, okay, cool. Now, moving forward, I am at Wild and Out. It's a couple months in now. I've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. So the site was down for how long? The site was up at that point for, uh, I want to say, two to three years. And then it was down for how long? How long was it? Like three or four months. The, it was down that long? It may even be longer than that. I have, honestly, wow. I'm still, we're, we're now going through all of the stuff. Uh -huh. Like it's a lot. So, you know, when you're making six figures a month from one source and then that just goes away, First thing you start saying is like, where can I consolidate? Where can I downsize? Where can I? My staff doubled up job responsibilities. We moved stuff around. So I didn't have to lose anybody, but I lost hundreds of thousands of revenue. And then I called Karen for help and she said, oh, I'm gonna help you. So she was on the job. I'm at Wildin' Out one day backstage, uh, getting ready to go on the stage. We're about to pray. And my phone's blowing up, blowing up, blowing up. I'm like, who is this? So finally I take the call. And it's this guy I had met at Art Basel. Cause you know, I'm out here. I'm getting at everybody. Where Angelo at? Getting at everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I get this guy's number. Mm -hmm. And this guy, I, I talked to him while I was at Art Basel, but they never called him. But I keep all my phone numbers. I have like 22,000 numbers. I keep every phone number. I have multiple, all my phones I've ever had, I keep them all for various reasons. But I'm texting him. He's texting me. I get, I'm like, hello? He says, yeah, man, we met at Art Basel. What's up? I say, yeah, I'm about to go on stage a while now. And he says to me, yo, I just saw you say something crazy on your Instagram about, your personal Instagram about your page being deleted, Hollywood Unlocked. I said, yeah. He said, well, I know who did it. I said, who did it? Now I'm listening. He said, my brother did it. I said, shut the hell up. He said, no, for real, my brother did it. 
I want to put you on the phone with him. I tell Nick, hold on, I, I can't go now out there. Now you about to tape, bro. You about to tape, Nick? Hold on. Hold on, Nick. We gotta hold the whole. Pre- hold on. I call. The, he puts the brother on three way. It's a kid. So I'm like, yo, is this a game? Are y'all trying to get clout? He says to me, listen, Karen Civil. You know who that is? They 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 paid me to take your page down. I said, are you? You're lying. I said, let me go do this real quick. I got something to do. I'm gonna come right back. I go. I do all my jokes. Do all of that. I get off. I immediately call him back. I said, you need to send me proof. He had screen recorded all of his text messages with Karen Civil, all of everything. She basically not only put a hit on Hollywood Unlocked, but my per- YouTube channel, my personal Instagram, my Facebook. She had sent all my content, all my stuff to him, and he screen recorded it. Sent me all the text messages about how once he, the Hollywood Unlocked page went down, she was like, now nah, I need you to hit all these other pages. I need-. She basically put a, a hit on all my pages. Why? Because I had written a story at Hollywood Unlocked after Cameron did his thing and we posted it, she has to take it down. I think we took that down because she didn't like that. And I was trying to get her on my show. She's scheduled to come on my show. She was scheduled to come on and right before I saw these text messages too, she says, I'm coming on, but we can't talk Cameron. I said, well, on my show, you can't tell me what we can't talk about. We're just going to talk. But you can flip it however you want to flip it, but it's a safe space. She canceled the interview. From that point on, I was like, okay, you're really not a friend. You, you want to use me as this platform to push your agenda. No. So at that point, we stopped being, we started being really fair, but we were really on top of Karen's shit. James R. from Love and Hip Hop hits me up and he says, hey, Karen Civil took $17,000 from me. This is after all the camera stuff. So I said, really? I said, well, if you post it, I'll repost it on Hollywood Unlocked. He did, and I posted it. Next thing I do is I get a call from Karen Civil like, yo, can you take that down? I said, no, because that's what happened. Now, if you want to come on my show and talk about it and the camera, let's do it. She said no. She left. It was cool. Next thing I get, Walter Mosley, my first attorney when I started blogging, sends me a cease and desist letter from Karen saying, take it down or they're going to sue me. I call Walter, and I'm like, bruh, now you already know I'm not taking it down. And I left it up, and uh, in any way, long story short, that went bad, and then the next thing is the page went down, probably like a month later. So fast forward to the guy. When he t- tells me this, I start thinking, why would Karen Civil do it? And there were two things happening at the time. I've taken a big hit about the whole beef with Nicki Minaj. And by the way, Nicki, I know you called me the other day. We're going to get to that in a minute. When I took the whole beef with Nicki Minaj, this started with all the way back in 2017 when Karen was working for Nicki as her social media pit bull. Mm -hmm. And she would call and say, can you post this about Nicki? Can you post this about Nicki? Can you do this? Can you do this? And if you do it, Nicki's going to like it. Nicki's going to comment. And at first we did, and we tried to show love to Nicki, and Nicki never showed the love back, so we stopped. And then Karen kept pushing, 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 pushing Nikki. And then I kind of just fell back from her. So when I saw the text message from the guy, after I got off Love uh, Wild and Out, I went to my hotel. I set up, I got multiple phones. I set up one phone videotaping and one phone FaceTiming the guy. And I asked him for two hours, I talked to him about it. He tells me he's a young kid from Florida, wants to get in the rap game. He's basically poor, struggling, doesn't have an outlet, met a Karen Civil. Karen told him that if he she worked with him, if he worked with her and helped her with a couple things online, hacking, which is what his side hustle was, that she would put him on. She introduced him allegedly to TDE. I don't know that that's true or not. This is just what he's saying. And then uh, she sends him $20,000 with instructions to take out my shit. Now, he's like, I didn't even know who you were. My brother told me, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm afraid. I said, look, relax. He tells me all this. He sends me all the receipts, all the text messages, and I end my two-hour call with him. Then I pick up the phone, camera over here, phone over here, and I call Karen Civil. And I called her and I said, hey, so we have to have a conversation. What's up, Jason? Mind you, remember, I thought she was helping me get my page back. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yo, this is a weird-ass call I got to make to you right now. I know how the fuck my page went down. You did it. And she was quiet, and I went on and on telling her what I know. Before you say anything to me, I, I talked to this dude. I, this is what he said. This is what you did. You know you did it. And she says to me, you know what? I had to do it. You know what I mean? Like, you got your ways of doing your dirt. I got my ways of mine. We went back and forth on that. That's kind of gangster, you got to admit. I respect it. <laughs> I would admit it, though. You got to admit, that's kind of gangster, down, Jason. I, I ain't going to lie. I've done a lot of things in my life. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I would admit that. I've done a lot of things in my life. Now, I always know who I'm dealing with when I'm dealing with people. If you know you're dealing with somebody who ain't afraid to say anything, 
don't have no uh, industry politics holding him back, owns his own brand, can say whatever the fuck he wants, and you know now you got caught, I would have lied to the end of the day. But the problem is <laughs> she knew I had the receipts because I told her. Mm-hmm. So she owned it. And, you know, if she was, um, if she wanted to be, uh, you know, because, you know, now she's online talking real spicy how she's a hood bitch and all this and that, and that's great because um, they're going to love her in prison. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that, when she said it, I was sitting there looking like, okay, cool. So I said to her, cool, I appreciate you being honest, but just know this, I don't know when and where, but I'm going to fucking get you. I'm going to get you. I don't and know when, how. What was this? When did you find out that it was her? How, how long ago was this? This was in 2018. 18. Oh, damn, so y'all been sitting on this. So I said, I'm going to get you. I ain't said it. I came up here, I wanted to say it so bad because I wanted her to never be able to come and sit in this seat again. This is a privilege on my uh, things I want to accomplish when I started Hollywood Unlocked, Wendy Show, Breakfast Club, they were all on my list. And so I started checking them off and I did it all based on hard work. I knew you for a long time. I never asked, can I come? Can I come? I didn't do all that. I didn't send gifts. I didn't send money. I, I earned my my spot here. And I feel like when you come to this show, it's because you you earned your spot. You don't just let everybody come up here. For her, when she would come up here, I would be so frustrated I told Karen in 2018, I don't know when and how, but I'm going to get you. Fast forward, I get off a while and out. I come back to L.A. and I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I go to Penthouse. I walk in. Arnold Turner's there taking photos. And I walk directly into Karen Civil. And she says, can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? And mind you, I haven't seen her since our conversation. And I said to her, I don't have nothing to say to you. Arnold says, can I get a picture with you too? I said, fuck, no, I'm not taking a picture with her. I'm never going to be another picture with this woman. She sits down and she begs me to forgive her. Please, Jason, please, just like, let's get past this. You know, I own my shit. You know, I, we, this and this, you're in the culture, I'm in the culture. And, I, and, I, and, I, and it hit me. Okay, she actually thinks I will forgive her. So I said, you know what? Give me some time to think about it. I appreciate you being humble and, and, and really asking me, let me think about it because we do have a relationship. But in my mind, I was saying, oh, no, 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 no. Went home, I prayed on it. And then I hit her. I said, you know what, Karen? You're right. We worked really hard to be a part of this culture, and, and it needs us. You have the brands on lock. I got the, let's work together. You're right. And I disarmed her, and from that point on, she would call me, hey, I need Tiffany Haddish to give us a quote for Nipsey's uh, funeral, uh, his memorial book. Not a problem. Let me call Tiffany. Hey, Tiffany, um, they would like um, a quote for you for Nipsey Hussle's memorial. Tiffany, as you know, is a good friend of ours, mm-hmm. beautiful person. Rich love Rand represents her country, loves Nip. I love Nipsey Hussle and what he represents for, um, for, for the culture in, in L.A. I was here the day after he died. We talked about that. Mm-hmm. So I would do anything for Nipsey. This was not for her, so I did it. And then in doing it, I said, Tiffany would like to come to the memorial. Can we get a couple tickets? Tiffany then couldn't come. I in, in, uh, ended up going there. Left all of that. So she thought we were friends this whole time. Lots so hold of on. Texting. What did God tell you when you prayed, Jason? God remembered to tell me that although vengeance is his, sometimes on earth you got to, you know, you got to set up situations for people to get their own karma. This is what happened. I didn't go and burn down the Internet with the Karens and this because if I would have said it, nobody would have believed me. Mm-hmm. Nobody would have believed me. They'd have been like, no way, Karen Civil with, with Hillary Clinton. They would have called you a hater. They would have called me a hater. They would have said he's hating black women. They say everything about me. I was fat. They said. And I'm people, sure Hillary has hacked the email or two. Or sorry. I mean, <laughs> Karen probably did that too, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the deal. When I was fat, they said he going to die of a heart attack. I lost all the weight. They said he had HIV. I said, they asked me what my preference in dating was. I said, a light-skinned Dominican. They say he's a colorist. I said that a trans woman shouldn't have any opinion over the, or the body of a female when it comes to pregnancy. I'm transphobic. If I say I date younger, I'm a pedophile. When I tell a nigga I won't fuck him to put him on Love and Hip Hop, he said I was too aggressive and, 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 and alludes to wanting to rape him. They've said everything about me. Mm-hmm. They've said everything about me. And I never defended myself because I learned a long time ago that the savage always wins. So just be that savage because this is what the people wanted. So I kept giving the people what they wanted and I took every hit. Uh, and, I, and I said, I was just going to let them say whatever they want about me until this year. And with Karen, this past weekend, when people wanted me to get online and drag her, I said, you know what? This is vindication in many ways and also validation. Wack was texting me as I'm driving down the street in Miami. Get on Clubhouse, get on Clubhouse, it's going down. So I get on Clubhouse, and she's having this whole conversation. And what I think the people are missing is, you know, they have selective cancellation. Karen Civil was in a call, in a Clubhouse chat with Kita, who was the assistant of Big U. For people who don't know who Big U is, 
run the Crip organization for many years, and he's a public figure who does a lot of good work in the community. Karen Civil was back and forth with Keita about how Nip didn't fuck with her before she, he died and how the family didn't fuck with her and how she used the memorial of Nipsey Hussle to propagate this big thing with the Barack Obama and all of this, like she was that girl. Then she confronted Jesse Wu and did this whole, you know, I'm a street bitch, this is how I handle things, try to get gangster like she did with my Instagram. So I'm listening to it, and I waited for the for it to pause, and then I interjected and said, well, let's talk about Hollywood Unlocked because you took it down. Now, mind you, she know I got the receipts. She know I know. She knows we've had all these conversations. And in her mind, she couldn't really finesse the conversation because she had to go through years and years of conversations, text messages about Nikki, this and that. She really didn't know where I was going to come with it, and she admitted it. And that's all I needed. I got the admission, and people saw her for who she was. Then you had Joyner Lucas. Then you had Big U come and say she did it. Then you had the uh, the organization of Haiti says she did it. Mm-hmm. Then you have uh, YG, who she was a part of his camp, his artist saying it. All these people are saying it. So now people are listening to me. And you know what? I've been said it first. And I think that what the lesson in it for me was, get your delivery together so people start paying attention. Because when you do all that rah, 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 they get caught up in that and distracted and they miss the point. The point that I've always said about Karen is, she is the cancer of this culture. She taught me early on when I was her neighbor, if I take a picture with this iPhone and say, and, and a caption that says, connected around the world at Apple, you take that image and then send it over to Samsung to get a deal. Her hustle is immaculate. She know how to get the bag, and I will never knock her for that. But I also feel like I wouldn't feel authentic if I took a, did a bunch of fake shit to get on. Like, you fake it till you make it, meaning my fake it till you make it is I was smiling in front of people's faces when I didn't have no money, acting like it was all good when I was broke. So that was my faking it till I make it. But I was never going to be fake to figure it out. And that's what she's been for a long time. So I'm glad that she finally owned it public, and I'm, I'm glad that people finally saw it. But let me tell you what she's doing now that I haven't told nobody. So she calls Wack. I didn't ask Wack if I could say this, but again, just me being honest. She calls Wack and she says, hey, yo, you cool with Jason Lee? Like, like, what are you doing? Like, you know, how you moving? Because I made sure when this broke that I sent it to every platform and said, I'm sending it to you, put it up. Angie, Robin, Jasmine, Kyle, everybody, bloggers, YouTubers, I sent it to all of them. I said, put it out because the culture needs to wake up. Everybody put it out. So when, so Wack calls me and says, so she calls Wack and she says, are you cool with Jason Lee? And he's like, yeah, yeah, Jason Cool always been cool with me. He always wanted it. Now, Wack has called me and had to check me for a couple things because sometimes you know, early on I used to go too far. But Wack said she asked him like to basically like make it go away, make me go away. Wack was like, nah, I'm not getting in that. So then I get a call from somebody who says, um, somebody reaches out to my team and says, somebody wants to talk to Jason Lee. Now, the person who sent it, uh, I'm not going to say his name right now, but I said, okay, well, let me call him. I called him, and he said, Nicki Minaj would like to speak to you. What? Nicki Minaj, after four years of fighting, dropping stories on her, talking, I mean, she's currently got served for the, the, the husband who raped that girl. Uh, you know, she canceled the VMAs because she wasn't ready to do her performance, even though she blamed it on COVID and didn't get the Video Vanguard Award as a result of that. I don't even know if we dropped that story. But all these, she has all these issues with me, and she wants to talk about Karen Civil. So the person said Nikki wanted to talk to me, and uh, with Karen on the phone. I said no, she can call me directly. I'll talk to Karen uh, to Nikki, uh, but uh, but she didn't want to talk to me by herself on the phone. So the call didn't happen. The reason why I think Nikki is trying to call now and intervene is because when we pursue Karen the way that we're getting ready to, we got to go through a process called discovery. Where'd the $20,000 come from? How'd you file that on your taxes? Uh, did he file on his taxes? He's a minor. Did you have a contract with his parents? Did you get permission? What? What? I want to follow the money. I want to follow the text messages, the emails. Who's behind it? Who, who? Who's supporting what? That's what they're trying to avoid. But they can't avoid it now because it's out there, and we plan to figure it out. So you gonna? So they're gonna bring up? Char- are they gonna bring up charges? And when are they gonna do the charges? Do we know? We um, we had a meeting yesterday, and my team doesn't want to talk about everything we plan to do legally, but just, like, f- for sure, it's not a moment in uh, social media history. Definitely going to pursue it. You know, there's a lot of people online guiding Karen Civil. There's a person that we all know, 
that uh, you may not want to talk about today who's guiding her. His name is Joe Budden. He's had a lot to say on Clubhouse. Now, I haven't heard all his clips, but I did want to say something really quick to Joe. Joe, you've had a lot to say about me. Even though it wasn't a lot, it was too much, even if it was my name. Don't say nothing about me because you don't know what I have about you. And I'm telling you, at this point, if, if everybody wants to insert themselves in this conversation, please don't have no dirt because I am loyal to Hollywood Unlocked, the same platform that Karen tried to take away. And to distract people from the point that she actually admitted it is crazy to me. That's the frustrating part. I'm sitting here watching this movie play out, like people tweeting me, Joe Budden now coming for Jason Lee. I'm like, coming for me for what? And I, it makes sense. She's now trying to use every relationship she got to hold on to the little bit of credibility that she doesn't have. You, out your own mouth, said you did it. You said you were Olivia Pope. Well, guess what? Olivia Pope never got caught. That's the difference. Olivia Pope would have never, she would have went down in a burning plane to say she didn't do it. But Karen wanted to be that, that hood bitch and own it. Well, cool, I'm glad you owned it. So you're going to have to own it all the way to the end now. Where is my Polly Santo? Jason Lee, you do not sound healed at all. No, I'm very healed. I actually thought about what I was going to say today because, you know, I said they will get caught up in the delivery. I said I wasn't even going to talk about Joe Budden today. But I thought about it. They say I work for you. When he got into it with you, and then I started doing my job after an interview with Tahiri that just Tahiri hit me up about. They said that I was Charlemagne's bitch. Mm -hmm. When I come, when I report on what Nikki's doing, I'm Cardi B unlocked. They've discredited me every chance they've gotten mm -hmm. the whole time I've let them. I don't call Charlemagne and say, can you go on your show and please tell them that I'm not your bitch? Because I don't need Charlemagne to stick up for me and I don't need to stick up for Charlemagne. He's mm -hmm. a grown ass man, I'm a grown ass man. I do what I do based on what I believe needs to be done. Envy, when I was in Columbia and you were calling my phone, I was like, damn, what did we do to Envy today? I started going I'm gonna to tell you, The funny thing is, I called Jason Lee, right? And I'm calling him. Oh, answers, you know, sometimes, you know, I feel like we we don't thank people or we don't say, you know what, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So what I what I told myself is this year I'm going to call people because I have a bad habit. I don't call anybody. I keep mm -hmm. to myself, me and my family. So I called Jason no, Lee. No, mind you, he don't never call me. No, he called Jason Lee. He don't answer the phone. So now I'm like, he probably think it's some bullshit. So I'm calling him, calling him, calling him. So I finally get him on the phone, and he sounds mad weary, <laughs> right? I'm, and, and it's the funniest thing. I'm like, hey, what's up, Jason? It's Envy. Yeah, what's up? I'm like, damn, why the fuck do you make it sound so weary? I'm like, I just, I'm just calling to say thank you. He goes, what? Just calling to say thank you, brother. Because I appreciate it, and I appreciate your opinion on certain things because you don't hold back. It wasn't anything that you did for me. Yeah. You didn't post anything on your page about me, but you did something where a lot of people don't do it. Yeah. So I just wanted to say thank you. That was, yeah. That's the reason why. No, I was in Columbia and said envy, 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 and I just I, I kept sending voicemails. So I, I called my team. I'm like, what the fuck did y'all do to envy? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck envy calling me about? You know, because envy don't call. But uh, but then when I called you and you thanked me, it, I was kind of shocked because people don't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people don't do that. <clears throat> and and I think that you know for many. For many reasons, I own a lot of that, too, because I haven't shown people the human side of me. I do show them the when I come at people's side. You know, uh, I, I have to start showing more of that, and that's why I'm trying to evolve. I'm a work in progress. I'm not perfect. I'm doing the therapy. I'm doing the, you know, praying more and taking more time to myself. And, you know, I've lost the weight, but now I'm mentally trying to lose the weight of feeling like I always have to be on the defense, you know. Um, but I have an immense amount of respect for you, too. And so for when you, when you call and when you thank me, I hung up and looked at my, my, my team, and I was like, that was envy of thanking me, thanking me. It was crazy. But, um, you know, again, I'm not mad at Karen Civil anymore because there was a big release this weekend. Like, damn, okay, you took responsibility. Now we can let the process do what the process is going to do. Um, I tweeted that she should go to jail and that uh, – or no, I didn't tweet that. I said that on my Instagram in a rant that she should go to jail and that, uh, you know – Serious, oh, do, do you like, – I want to give another perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, you know, I fuck with everybody involved. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't, I don't hate nobody. I either love you, wish you well, or hope you heal. Do you really want to see her go to jail, Jason? Yes. Why? I'm gonna tell you why. Because let's have this conversation. Everybody wants to see Tory Lanez go to jail for shooting Meg. He hurt a black woman, allegedly. So if he's found guilty of hurting her, that's a crime. He should go to jail. Mm-hmm. Protect black women. Protect Jesse Wu. Protect the women in Haiti. Protect the women, the black women that were my employees who were subjected to almost losing their jobs as a result of this cyber crime. It's a crime. But it's it's a crime against somebody that may not be as popular as Meg or whatever, but it's still a crime. People should be held accountable. 
you know, I've been accused. Right now, I'm on this streaming platform called Bego Live. And there's a guy on there who does a lot of dirty stuff to people. And he released my home address. And he, he, he um, you know, was doing all these things and, and calling me all kinds of stuff and doing stuff to a bunch of people on the platform. Come to find out he was trying to fuck on a minor, a young boy. We mm -hmm. found out. So I went to the platform and I said, I can't be on your billboards in Times Square if you don't hold this person accountable. This person is on this billboard. I'm on the billboard. He's soliciting sex from a minor. Here's the receipts. Here's the kid saying it. Here's the text messages. And they removed him as a host. And everybody now is like, oh, my God, Jason removed him as a host. Uh, and then now he wants to sue me because I exposed that he was chasing kids. Um, you know, I don't care about being unpopular for saying that people should be held accountable. They've tried to hold me accountable for all types of shit that I have never even done. So I look at it like if I take Karen Civil out the way, the person, and I look at the activity of cyber crimes, extortion, um, and all the other things or whatever, yeah, why should she not be held accountable? Because she stood on a podium with Hillary Clinton? She mm -hmm. lost too. They both need to lose. I have no, I'm not mad at her. I appreciate that she took responsibility. I'm glad that she owned it. Uh, and I'm glad that her voice admitted it. But now she needs to be held accountable. Now, Charlamagne, let me ask you a question now. Yes, sir. If it wasn't Karen Civil, let's say it was just a regular person that did this, do you think that that person should go to jail? Or do you say, or you feel different because Karen's your homie? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't, I can't answer that like question. Like I know Karen, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I can't. Or, or somebody tried to take you down, you know what I mean? And same well, see, thing. I see both sides. Mm -hmm. I understand why Jason feels the way he feels. I can see why Karen got the page taped. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, Trust I, me, no. that's Envy's playbook. No. By the way, <laughs> <God damn right. laughs> Envy will get God something taken down. Right. But there's nothing wrong, the wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. I do. I do too. I would do it. That's that's my play. But you, I wouldn't hire a hacker. You do, it, you do it the right way. Right. When I got the, let me say this, I've done it the right way. Have I had people's pages in, investigated by the platforms and held accountable for violating terms and conditions? Yeah. That's not nothing wrong with that because that's that's just protecting the integrity of the space we all share and, and, and uh, the culture benefits from. But are we going to go out there and say, yeah, Envy, I got you. No. no, what is that? What is that for? You, you, that's for your own personal mm -hmm. ego. You're feeding your ego, so your ego now got it. it. Your ego has to be addressed. That's the difference. And you didn't do it properly. You you called a kid, and you preyed on the dreams of a person who was where I was, where we all started. Nothing. I look at your Instagram. I'm like, damn. I know you didn't start like that. Mm -hmm. We're not. We're first generational money. Absolutely. So we fought hard to get here. Guess what? We are gonna fight even harder to protect it. And if you do it the right way, damn, you beat me at my own game. But if you do it the wrong way, you did it dirty. I don't subscribe to the street politics. I'm not a gangster. I, wor I will call the FBI, and we are calling them. I will call the people that have to do their job at holding you accountable. So you can go get your street niggas and send them to my house. You can do all I got street niggas too, but I'm not calling them. All of y'all, look up the word racketeering and all that other shit. Don't bother me. You did your dirt. You owned it. Now you got to own it all the way through. And so if the, if the streets say, well, he's a snitch, he's this and that. I already said when I got shot, I went right there to court and said, your honor, he shot me. He was driving <laughs> and it's because of him. And they're all in prison for the rest of their life right now. I already did it. So you're a civilian. I, yeah, I'm I a civilian. It. Now, you know, for people who ask, right, is there any way to not proceed? That's or, what I, I want to see. How can we heal? Can we get to a oh. proper understanding? Because she did hold herself accountable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? She did admit she did you wrong. Like, is there any way, like, it could get Oh, the to next day she went on a clubhouse and allegedly said she has an audio of me that she, I don't want to get out. Put it out. Release the tapes. I don't give a fuck what you say about me. Every phone call I have, I assume I'm either on a speakerphone or being recorded because I've done it. Mm. I don't care. I have hours and hours and hours of conversations people putting me in situations or putting themselves in situations. Let me tell you something else that was so crazy. When I dropped that 14 minute video clip on my Instagram. Of what? I, of me blasting Karen Silva oh, and you, all you, that. This was before Joyner Lucas and all this came out. This was before all that. A couple days before, I get a phone call from a celebrity who says, I know somebody who's been working with this group of people to create a story on you where they want to set you up and say you're a pedophile. I said, shut the hell up. This is what the person, I'm recording the conversation. Stuff like that happens all the time, by the way. Mm -hmm. But you know, until you're in it, you don't, yeah, you don't believe that it's real. Yeah, absolutely. And then when you're in it, you're like, I ain't worried about that because that's fucking crazy. 
shit is crazy, right? So I so I, I'm recording it. So what I do was they tell me who the person is. I went through this guy's Instagram and I found people that were in the pictures with him that I knew and I called them and I said, Hey, you've known me for twenty years. You better tell him who's 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 gonna handle him. So they called him. He calls me on my phone. And he's, and he's trying to defend himself because he tried to do big, big shit with Netflixes and all this and that. But then he's managing this trash bag YouTuber who I'm not going to say her name, but I'm sure you know. And I said to him, if you guys conjure up the story, if she conjures up the story, even though you don't have nothing to do with production, you're her manager. You better manage it because, one, I'm going to sue the shit out of all of you. But you, I'm gonna come, you're in my city. I'm going to fuck you up. That's what I tell him. He texts me back. I handled it. Nothing's nothing's happening don't worry about it if there's an issue you have an open door to me i said i'm not calling you no more i've already made the phone call fast forward when the story comes about the clubhouse shit i go on the neighborhood talk and i see the youtuber leaves a comment oh forget all of this let's talk about those underage boys he's starting the narrative so i screenshotted it and then the the person i removed off the platform was in the comments with her trying to collude to create this story so i ain't say nothing but now it's gone why because i already gave you that warning they all don't know what I know, but they also don't know who I know. And I'm watching it all play out, and I'm thinking like, yo, this is what we're doing because you can't beat me at the game legitimately. You want to try to play around on my name? Not a problem. So I, I, I've been looking at this experience through lenses of, one, very interesting. Let's keep playing this game, and let's go all the way. All my attorneys know that we are going to sue everybody and anybody uh, that um, is involved with this case, and, you know, um, that's, you know, doing anything that is illegal. And more importantly, I have a responsibility to fix my delivery mm -hmm. so people can start to hear my voice. And and that's where I feel like in this conversation, I'm not putting a hit on Karen. In fact, I think Karen took responsibility and the conversation now needs to shift to how do we hold the industry accountable. Uh, but, but I'm going to keep talking my truth and be the voice, in my opinion, of people who want to know what's actually happening. You know, I don't subscribe to the politics. I know a lot of people, but I'm I'm not married to anybody in the sense that I am obligated to be their, you know, their mouthpiece. I can't tell you the levels of mess this is. <laughs> huh? I can't tell you the levels of mess this is. Yeah. It's just messy. But I, I mean, listen, I don't, I, I know Karen for a long time. I, I've never done business with her, so I can't speak to any of her business interests, but I, I've, I've, I've seen her personally do a lot of good for people. But you've done business with her and don't realize, I'm gonna show you how she do business. This is how she do it, right? If she sets up Hillary Clinton to come here, which is great for the Breakfast Club, that's great for you guys, good luck. But the way she uses the Breakfast Club to sell herself to Hillary Clinton is the transaction. Well, she didn't set that up though. But I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I'm saying hypothetically, like oh, gotcha, that's gotcha, how, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. right? So she knows how to say, like for example, if she can say, I can call the owners of all the platforms and create this narrative for you, she sells that, right? And that's what she's done. I have text messages, several text messages of her trying to do that for other artists. But that's why this last year, when I took some downtime, I didn't really take downtime. I took the COVID time to start developing these courses that I'm working on so that way I can level the playing field. There should be multiple Hollywood Unlocks, multiple shade rooms. So I'm going to teach people how to create and monetize their own blog, how to create a successful podcast, how to build a multi-million dollar company from scratch and have a voice in the culture. So that's part of what I've been working on. Mm -hmm. So that way the one Karen Civil doesn't control the three voices that have the most impact in the culture. Give the voice back to the people. Give the game to the people. Um, and so, yeah, it's messy. But see, that's the narrative they'll, they'll create to say Jason's messy. This is a mess that I didn't create. Mm -hmm. This is a mess mm -hmm. that Karen Civil created. But, uh, I but do I'll feel be like that blueprint that you, we keep talking about with Karen is the influencer blueprint, though. Like I've, I've, I feel like I see everybody move like that. That's a but what's Karen's? I know Envy's title. I know your title. I know my titles. What is Karen's title? People thought she was a publicist. Then she was a media maven. Then she was a marketing specialist. She is a chameleon, shape shifting, finessing hustler. Period. And she's done a great job at it, and I can't knock her for that. She makes I, things happen. She makes things happen. But you can pick up the phone and call Adam, the CEO of Instagram, anytime you want. We could all make things happen. We all got buttons we could push. We can call people. I'll be with Rihanna tonight, following her around like a lap dog because I'm in love with her. But <laughs> <laughs> she's the only woman that uh, made me reconsider going back to women, by the way. Really? Yeah, but, you know, not going to happen. So, yeah, I mean, look, we all got buttons we could push. We all got relationships. Um, 
but but how we protect and safeguard those relationships and how we engage them and how we utilize them is is important. The only thing I didn't like, Jason. Yes. The only thing I didn't like. Okay. Is when you do the Breakfast Club in there, mm-hmm. and y'all said we, I don't know what the word you use, but we were foul oh. for having her up here. And I would say the only reason I say that is what this having this platform is we try to have people that most media won't have to show people like yourself that yeah. it's more than just baseball, basketball, football, and rapping. Yeah. You know, you could be a millionaire by creating your own blog and creating your own media company. You could be your own millionaire by doing car shows and being a DJ. That's the only thing I didn't like. I was like, you know, we go based off of trying to give people an opportunity. And also, with you being here today, like if Karen wants to come on, we have to have her on. Yeah, she should. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When she comes, okay, to your point, um, I was definitely gaslighting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was definitely gaslighting. Would you call that finessing? No, that was gaslighting. <laughs> let me say. Let me say this. Let me be very clear. I wasn't at all uh, suggesting that you all were complicit mm-hmm. in supporting the bullshit. What I was saying is, we all have to be very careful of who we give the platform to, and you didn't know. None of you knew, mm-hmm. you know? I know now people are online saying, Charlemagne's protecting his friend, protecting his friend, not to hold her accountable. I want her to come to the Breakfast Club, but I want her to be asked the real questions. Give her the space to answer them all. She's talking on Clubhouse all day long. Mm-hmm. Nobody gives a fuck about what they're talking about on Clubhouse, but they care about what you're talking about here. It's also not my responsibility to hold her accountable. Only thing I can do is report the story, but, and I, I think I told you this, you have a right to your opinion because you actually had that interaction with her. Joiner does. Jesse does, Cameron does. The rest of us are Hades. just on the outside yeah, looking I, in. I, I, I kind of disagree. If she comes up on this platform, and, and anybody who comes up on this platform, if there's something that's said about them and we don't ask, I don't think we. Oh no, do but that's not holding them accountable. That's just oh. asking them. Because mm-hmm. what if she, what if she said I didn't do any of that? Oh, I mean, like I admitted yeah. to Jason, yeah. but I didn't do none of that stuff. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But okay, on one hand, I totally understand that. Where people would say, well, everybody's saying it doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. Because there's been narratives created about all of us that mm-hmm. aren't true. That once somebody says it, another person says it, another person says it, another person says it. With social media, it's, oh, it must be true. Absolutely. I get that. I understand that and I could appreciate the fairness. But I'm telling you, on my brother's grave, if it was right here and me standing on it, it happened to me. She admitted to it. We know that. Mm-hmm. She admitted to it because yeah. she knows I have the receipts. All I'm saying is... <laughs> You know, oh. I feel like you guys know me. I'm on national radio in part because of you and the show. Uh, I'm evolving as a brand as a result of the opportunities that I've gotten that I'm thankful for. But I also am not perfect, and I will own my imperfections. Um, but I just want a fair opportunity to do that. You know, let me evolve. Let me grow. I've I've been so, after I was here the last time my book came out, I started focusing on, focusing on uh, a quality-based group of people, not quantity. I have 2.73 million followers, but if I just get a half a percent of those people to buy into everything that I do, I'm going to win. Because every month I'm going to win with my merch, I'm going to win with my products, I'm going to win with my shows. I don't need 3 million people to buy into every single thing I do. So I stopped focusing on the masses. Back in the day when I used to follow 1,000 or 1,200 people, I hadn't followed everybody. Why? Because I used to get caught up in Karen Civil's Instagram and all the fake shit and say, damn, why I don't have this? Why I don't have that? When I started to realize that she ain't really got it either. She's finessing people by making it look that way so she can get it. So I unfollowed everybody who wasn't in my immediate world so I can put my blinders on and run my race. And I ran it a fair way until she came along. Now I'm back on track and as part of my next level of evolution, I have to start working on repairing a lot of damage I've done by some of my delivery. Now, I don't know if that started today. Maybe it starts tomorrow. I think it's a daily process, but... I'm asking people to just let me evolve and grow. And you she know, should have that same grace though, right? No. Jesus, no. Jason, that's not no, how it because, works. Because, okay, so if you get cancer in your arm, what are we going to move the cancer to your leg? You cut the cancer out. That's how you heal. That's how the culture heals. How many house niggas right now work at Apple and all these other places who act like they really are the culture? You're moving the culture, but you don't own nothing. No, you're not moving the culture. You are the house nigga that goes out to wrangle the culture so that way you can give them a piece of the bag, but you're not giving them the piece of the ownership. I own Hollywood Unlocked 97% of my company right now. When I sit down at the table, I'm not listening to somebody tell me what I'm going to do. I'm telling them what I'm going to do. And that has been the problem. I just recently called out some executives at Sony who are black, who control the bag, who don't spend money with Hollywood Unlocked. If you're looking like me, knowing that I hire and employ people that look like you, why are you not at the table with the white man saying, give Jason a Hollywood Unlocked a piece of this pie? You did it with iHeart. That's mm-hmm. why I'm here. 
there's certain people in the culture that actually pay attention and care, like you calling me and thanking me for being fair or whatever and saying what you said. That meant a lot to me because I'm like, you see me. Mm -hmm. When I see Rihanna and the first thing she says to me out her mouth is, I love you. And I know it's hard being friends with people that do what I do. But as a businesswoman, I respect how you built your brand. That's why I love Rihanna, not just because she looked good and smelled good, because she sees me as a person. And I feel like oftentimes I've done a lot of things and I've done a lot of viral videos and said a lot of shit that made people just say, this nigga crazy, he messy, he a gay messy blogger, I don't want to pay attention to him. But now I'm trying to evolve out of that. You know, I'm trying to get to that next level because I've mastered the tea thing. Now I want to master the rest of what this industry has for me in my lane. But you know, it's interesting. That's why I fuck with you, though. I mean, even years ago when we did that demo yeah. for the funeral, it's like I wasn't even working then. I wasn't in yeah. radio, and you hit me up. So yeah. that's, yeah, Jason saw me way back then. So I've always seen Jason since that moment. Yeah, you know and then what I mean? I'm sitting in my living room yesterday watching you on Good Morning America, and I'm like, you know, a lot of people who do what we do or do whatever they do, hairstylists, fashion style, they'll look at y'all and be like, why he get that? Why he on HBO? Why he on Comedy Central? Why is he, why is he have all, I did say that about your house though. That motherfucker's so big and all them Rolls Royces he got. I look at him like, damn, he doing it. But that's where I hit you and say, I want to figure out real estate. You know, I don't say hate Say dick him. real quick. Huh? Say dick. Dick? Yeah, because I'm going to edit it. When you say, this, I'm going to set a house, I'm going to put dick. His dick so <laughs> <laughs> He always plays. He always plays. He but always when plays. I look at you, <laughs> but when I look at, but when I look at what you guys, the moves you guys are making, I'm like, yo, I look at you as a template. I look at you as a roadmap. I don't look at you as competition. I, you know, Wendy's in the hospital today. I'm sending her flowers and I'm saying, sending I'm her healing energy. Healing energy. I'm not saying, <clears throat> oh, I hope that seat opens up for me. I don't ever think like that because what is for you will get to you when it's your turn. Mm -hmm. And when we did the funeral demo. The reason why I reached out to you is because in many ways, I'm like, yo, he is fucking fearless. He is saying he don't care. You, know, you, you more polished now than you were then because you were out of control. You were out of control. But that was 15 years ago, by the way. It was 15 years ago. But I was like, yo, that is that's I wanted what I wanted was to just be unfiltered and be honest. But now I'm learning. I don't have to be nasty. I don't have to be vindictive. You said something on Good Morning America that I thought was really, really important, which is why I text you at the time. You said if you have a platform, you have a responsibility to use that in a you know in a productive way. And when I look at how I've used Hollywood Unlocked, although I think in many times I have, there have been times where I've done it in a different way. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm like, yo, I'm talking to millions of people every day. I have a responsibility to take them higher. Mm -hmm. So how do I elevate them? And so I'm figuring that out. I don't have it all figured out, but I am figuring that out. All right. I hope that we can get healing energy between all parties involved. You know, I do agree. Accountability is very important. But after that happens, you got to give everybody grace and you got to give everybody a chance to grow and evolve. Yeah, that 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 process is called parole. All right. Well, it's Jason Lee. Man, it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. 